So I decided to invite a really great friend of mine, my best friend in the whole wide world, Samantha, and she is a member of our group. She is a nurse. I connected with her about a year and a half ago and we just clicked and she runs this amazing company, Be Baby, and now she has a Facebook group, Be Baby Family. And she's super mom. She has three kids under three. She's running her own successful business online and in, and she did in-person consults as well at one point because of COVID, things happen. But she's just a wealth of information. So without further ado, here is Samantha. Hi everyone, nice to be on. Thank you Carly for uh, inviting me to uh, your live show here. Um, it's a great pleasure. Um, like Carly was saying, I am a registered nurse clinician and I am the uh, CEO and the founder of Be Baby. And uh, at Be Baby, what we do is we are a nursing consultation firm and we work one-on-one -on -one with clients in a virtual manner um, in pregnancy support, childbirth preparation courses, breastfeeding consulting, as well as uh, sleep consulting for babies from zero to uh, age five. And we have opened our Facebook group uh, just recently, a week ago about, uh, it's in the comments if you want to join, it's called um, Be Baby Family. So uh, Carly brought me on because you guys have been doing your month on induction talk or uh, in induction prevention. Um, and this is a subject that is near and dear to my heart. I believe this is what me and Carly actually connected about when we met on a parents group a year and a half ago. We were responding to a distressing post about someone being forced uh, into an induction. And we connected from there because we had similar view views. So um, over the past, I think it's two weeks now, Carly has been posting every day a few facts about induction. Um, and induction is, I believe, probably one of the worst problems we have in um, our birth culture today. It's come to a point where we schedule babies' births. Um, we take the due date as cash, as givens. And um, one of where you want to start when you're talking about induction is, is due dates. And um, due dates are set based on the first day of your last period, and then they tack on 40 weeks. The first problem with that is this date is set assuming that you have a 28-day cycle and that you ovulate on day 15. Well, if you've ever taken the time to start to know your cycle, very rare are the women who have an exactly 28-day cycle at every single one of their periods and that they ovulate exactly on day 15. Most of us have a little bit of variance in, in our cycles, and a cycle can be anywhere between like 26 days to 38 or even 42 days and be perfectly normal. And beyond that, even if you do have a 28-day cycle, there's no guarantee that you're ovulating on day 15. Perhaps you ovulate on day 10. You can ovulate as early as day 8. I have seen women ovulate during the end of their periods. So if you actually ovulated on day 10 of your cycle, and your cycle was not 28 days, but perhaps your cycles are more like 30 days, well, your due date could be off by almost two weeks, which means if you are supposed to give birth on September 15th, in reality, your due date might actually be September 30th. And if your due date is right on point, it's perfect, it's based on your ovulation, it's like right on schedule, even then, only 5% of women will give birth on their due dates. It's an, it's an approximation. And it was always meant to be an approximation where we would have some sort of idea of when the baby would come and when to start thinking, hmm, maybe I need to move things along. But it was never set as an eviction date. It's not like you crossed 40 weeks and so now baby needs to come out. 
And what's become even worse now is we start talking about inductions to women when they're 39 weeks. They're not even at their due date and we're scheduling inductions for them. We're basically evicting them at the bare minimum a week before their due date. The other thing is, this is assuming that your pregnancy is 40 weeks. Well, pregnancies have varying lengths. If you look at, you know, any animal or any mammal for that matter, they will always say that a pregnancy is between X and X number of months or X and X number of weeks for certain animals. So within humans, where we have such a high variety of diversity of people from different cultural and ethnic backgrounds and racial differences, well, our due dates, our pregnancy length can vary considerably. So for example, we know that uh, African-American women tend to have slightly longer pregnancies. Asian women tend to have shorter pregnancies. And so if an African-American woman, her pregnancy is supposed to be 42 weeks and not 40 weeks, and we set the due date at 40 weeks, then we're probably going to induce her a good two weeks before it's even her due date, which would mean an entire month before what we consider the limit of a pregnancy, which is two weeks after the supposed due date, which in itself is not really based on all that much science. It's just that we have noticed that if a baby goes overdue at a certain point in time, the placenta may start calcifying, may start working less well. And so the risk of a baby being stillborn is slightly higher. However, we're not in the dark ages. We have exams and tests that we do. So when a woman passes her due date, we can schedule non-stress tests so that we can verify that the baby's doing well, that the placenta is doing what it's supposed to do. We don't have to evict a baby before perhaps he's actually due to be born. We can just monitor and make sure that everything is all right and let the baby finish cooking. And the biggest problem with inductions is that um, the last few weeks of pregnancy are the weeks uh, during which not only does a baby take on a lot of weight and a lot of fat, which is extremely important for their ability to uh, maintain and, and control their own body temperatures, but that's when their lungs mature. So think about it, when they're inside your room, their lungs aren't doing anything at all, they're on a break. And so is their digestive system for, the ma for that matter. And so those last few weeks is when the lungs start to completely mature and be ready to actually do the important job of actually breathing. And so what usually happens if you let a baby come out when he's ready is when his lungs are fully developed and they're ready, they will start uh, producing a surfactant. And within that surfactant basically coats the inside of the alveoli in the lungs to allow it to actually expand and not stick together when air enters, which is, you know, kind of important. When your lungs, when the baby's lungs starts producing the surfactant, it includes a certain protein, which um, I will not start mentioning the code names of these proteins because it's not pertinent, but um, this protein actually alerts the woman's body that the baby is ready to be born. And in response, the woman's body will start creating prostaglandins that will soften the cervix and start producing more oxytocin, which will bind to receptors on the woman's uterus, which will start contracting. And the whole thing is this beautiful cascade of hormones and proteins and what have you that then brings on the birth of the baby at the perfect time. However, if we are deciding that because we have this miraculous drug called Pitocin, that we can decide that baby's born on this day, we might actually be pulling that baby out long before his lungs are ready to function. And so what we end up seeing is, oh, well, thank God I was induced because when my baby came out, he wasn't able to breathe and he had to be put into the NICU. And 
his digestive system didn't work either. So he had to be put on an NG tube and God only knows what would have happened if my baby had stayed in just three more days. Well, perhaps your baby's lungs would have finished, you know, maturing and perhaps his digestive system would have finished maturing and all this would have been avoided because in reality, what happened is the baby was born premature. A baby can be premature at 39 weeks. If your pregnancy is supposed to be 42 weeks, well, 39 weeks is three, he three weeks ahead. That's 37 weeks. And yeah, we say that a baby is no longer preterm at 37 weeks. But if you've attended a lot of births, you know that if a baby is born at 37 weeks because he's forced out, usually they're, they, they aren't quite at perm. They aren't quite ready. And oftentimes, I mean, some women have short pregnancies and 37 weeks is, you know, their, their approximate due date and, and that's fine, although that's fairly rare. But usually what we tend to notice if, especially in the first time mom, a baby is born on its own at 37 weeks, it's usually because there's something wrong. It's usually because there's something wrong with the baby or the placenta or anything like that. And the body had the wisdom of noticing that the womb was no longer a safe place for the baby and so brought on labor so that the baby would be born because our bodies are that smart. Our bodies are often able to notice when there's something wrong and to say, mm, okay, baby needs to come out. He's going to do better, you know, outside. And so we need to push for the baby to be born. Beyond that, there's the thing where we have to notice that all our babies are actually born three months early as humans. Because if you look at babies in any different, you know, animal, um, within a few weeks, within a few days, within a few hours, um, the babies are walking, they're running, they can actually bring themselves to food or their mother's nipples, etc. Our babies, on the other hand, aren't able to do much when they're born. And one of the reasons that have been advanced as to why is we have a very developed pre, um, neocortex. And so the, the portion of the brain that's responsible for rational thinking, language, as well as social interactions. And this has caused us to have big heads. And so in order to prevent difficulties in childbirth, we assume, we postulate um, that our babies are born about three months before they should actually be born so that we can actually birth them without any trouble. So if your babies are already technically three months premature, and then you go and tack on three weeks, two weeks of prematurity, it's not great. The other thing is, um, especially with first time moms, I see Carly post this all the time in the mom groups. Um, a first time mom is approaching 40 weeks and her doctor's already talking about inductions. And here's the thing, your average first time mom on average, which means the norm, which means most first time moms will go to 41 weeks and six days. 41 weeks and six days. Oh, it's six? I thought it was three. You might be right. It might be three days. I think depending on where you look, it's three days or, or six days, but it's 41 weeks yeah, two days, yeah, right? We've seen that the uh, averages with the inductions too. Exactly. And so we're basically telling first time moms, oh, well, goodness sake, your baby isn't born at 40 weeks. We Something's wrong with your body. You're not functioning, right? I mean, we need to pull that baby out. Well, no, actually, she's a first time mom. Her body needs a little bit more time to actually get there. And perhaps we should give her more time. So that's, you know, the, 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 the science, if you will, are, are surrounding the due dates. But then beyond that, um, as you've probably seen uh, Carly discuss, is all the, the complications that occur with uh, being induced. So Pitocin is actually a synthetic drug which imitates the action of oxytocin. And oxytocin is a natural hormone that we release when we have an orgasm, when we cuddle our children, when we are in any type of loving situation. It's basically the love hormone and it's magical. And it is responsible for the contractions of our uterus. It is responsible for actually pushing our babies out. And so 
Pitocin was a drug that was discovered um, that could imitate the action of oxytocin. And what's funny is when it was actually created, the doctor who created actually wrote, well, now that we have the control over something feminine that we otherwise had no control on, well, we can start having control over childbirth. Childbirth being an all important task for humanity that men had no control over, and that was a problem. And so when he created Pitocin, he actually said that there was no medical reason as to why we should be using it. However, how grand that we could now take over control over something that only women had control over. So that was the whole reason that they kept it. And there was a doctor that was working on this, you know, drug and the creation of it. And the first thing he said is we should not be using this drug unless we absolutely, absolutely need to, because it is dangerous. It does not work as well as oxytocin. It is way too strong. The contractions are irregular. They have no direction to it. It's, it's basically tying a brick to a gas pedal in a car and removing the steering wheel. It just drives and drives and drives and drives, but it's not connected to your brain, which is receiving messages from your pelvis to tell you where the baby is actually positioned. And so it's not pushing contractions in a logical way in order to get your baby out. It's just pushing like this. So it's basically just a brick on a gas pedal. And so we should only be using it in case of an emergency. Um, and the contractions obviously are much more painful which leads to a lot of women to end up taking an epidural because it's just too much. And then from then on comes this whole cascade that we could talk hours and hours about. Uh, but when you start doing, you know, one medical procedure, the next thing you know, you're drawn into this huge cascade of uh, medical interventions that will often unfortunately lead to cesarean sections, episiotomies, the use of a uh, vacuum, the use of forceps, a baby that's not doing well at birth because those contractions are so hard and pushing the baby against, you know, surfaces that he shouldn't even be touching on. And so the baby may, you know, exhibit distress while you're in labor, et cetera. And so we have no choice but to do a, a, a cesarean section. Well, the baby wouldn't have been in distress if we hadn't given in Pitocin. And beyond that, not only do we use Pitocin to play God and to induce labors, but now in approximately 75% of births in Canada, at some point we give Pitocin because we're so damn impatient that we have decided that if a mother does not dilate at a minimum of one centimeter per hour, then we give Pitocin to make that go faster because God forbid that she give birth at three in the morning. God forbid that it takes 12 hours instead of six hours, which moms are like, oh, yay, you know, six hours, way, way better than 12. Well, no, 12 hours on regular oxytocin contractions, doable. Six hours on Pitocin contractions, mm, not so great. It's a lot stronger. It's a lot more painful. It's a lot more intense. You go from zero to like 100 in, in no time. You have no time to adjust. There are no breaks because in natural labor, when at certain points in your labor, especially when you actually hit 10 centimeters, there's usually a break to allow you to rest before the next part of your, your labor. Whereas with Pitocin, as soon as your contractions start slowing down, they just ramp up. They just ramp up the dose <laughs> to make sure you don't have a chance to um, actually um, calm, uh, actually, you know, rest. So that's a little bit of my uh, my spiel about um, inductions. Thank you so much, Sam. And I actually did not know that the reason that Pitocin was invented was specifically to control women. I mean, I always had that feeling, and I thought about that even when I was reading Millie Hill's book Give Birth Like a Feminist but that didn't actually click in until you said it and I'm like yeah you're right that's exactly why they did that. I think if I remember well it was actually discovered by accident and uh, one of the doctors who discovered it warned against using it because he realized that it could be useful 
at some point sometimes, but it had severe side effects. And so we had to be very, very careful. But then another doctor saw the other opportunity of you know, this lifelong battle that humanity has had with women having control over something so huge and so monumental for our society. Oh, yes. God forbid women actually have power over ourselves, right? I mean, how can we live such, leave such an important task to women? Oh, I don't know. I mean, our silly little brains can't possibly handle it. I know. <laughs> God forbid women have businesses, right? Oh, I mean, seriously, my husband must be so, so angry that I, you know, as a stay-at-home mother, also bring in the bacon. I mean, poor him. Oh, I know, right? And God forbid you hire some other person to clean your house for you. You should be doing that, right? I'm so ashamed because I'm hiring a house manager to do, you know, my shopping and my cleaning and my seasonal clothes changing. I mean, I should just stop working and, and make no money and um, just clean my... I mean, I see nothing wrong with cleaning my toilets. I did it, you know, for years and years and years. And I was a very happy stay-at-home mother. And I am extremely proud of being a stay-at-home mother. I love being there for my children. Uh, but I also love being there for other moms. And so I feel as though being one does not forbid the other. Yeah, and if you no, I'm a way to do both by hiring somebody to do tasks that aren't important in the sense where th does it really matter long term who's cleaning my toilet, me or somebody else? It really doesn't. So no. if I can hire out for that, why not? <laughs> exactly. I mean, with Michaela, I was so sick during that pregnancy. I couldn't get off the couch. And I just was like, okay, I'm going to hire somebody to clean my house. I don't have a lot to spend, but even just doing it once a month is so refreshing. Because Best I was able to just rest and help mom too, because I was already a birth advocate at that point. So I was on my laptop a lot. Yes. I'm, I'm one for, I mean, if you're in my group, you've seen the live I think I did earlier this week about um, saying yes to yourself and, and when to say enough is enough. And I think in this society, we have a big problem where we make mothers believe that they should do everything, absolutely everything, never complain and always feel blessed for being tired, for being sick, for being exhausted, for being stressed. And I believe that that's total bullcrap because you would never tell the CEO of a corporation, a man, that is complaining about being tired or perhaps having too much work to just suck it up because he decided to have this job. No, they would say, have you hired an assistant? You don't have an assistant? I mean, that would free up your time so much. Whereas a mother will say, well, you decided to have your kids. I mean, this is motherhood. Welcome to the world. I mean, deal with it. Well, no. How about you tell mom, you know what helped me? Hiring a housekeeper was so awesome for me. She came once every two weeks or once every month and she did a big, big cleanup. And it was just that one more thing I didn't have to do. Or I had my groceries delivered. Or God forbid you pay somebody to actually do your groceries because you can do that. You yeah. can pay somebody to do your grocery shopping or pay somebody to prepare a few meals for you every week and deliver it to your house. So that on those days where you're just not feeling it or you're too tired or you're too, you have too much work, you can pull it out of the freezer. Exactly. I mean, there's so many options today. You know, if your nipples are bleeding, call me. If you're not sleeping because your baby's up at all hours, call me. Don't, you know, if you are, you know, facing another birth and you're afraid and you had a bad experience, call Carly, you know, let her help you. Let her say yes to yourself. You know, we spend so much money on our children, on toys, on this and that, that they're just going to color on and break anyways. Um, but then when it comes to extremely important things, um, such as preventing an induction for yourself, well, we're not willing to to, to spend a dime because it's on ourselves. Another I mean, thing that I wanted to right? really touch on, I mean, we get asked by our partners or by our family, what do you want for the holidays? What do you want for your birthday? And I don't know about the rest of you, but 
for me, Sam, it was always like, um, I can't really think of anything. I don't really need anything. I mean, I have everything I need. And I mean, the kids need stuff, but I don't really need anything. And my husband would give me money and he'd say, okay, you're going to spend this on yourself. You're not going to spend this on bills. And I didn't know what to do with it. Yep. Like now I've been thinking, okay, well, I need help with this. So I'm going to spend it on that. It's like, you know, what would be really nice getting my hair done or having somebody come and clean my house. So if you don't know, you don't want another thing in your house, but you do want help, say, you know what would be helpful? Hire me a cleaning lady to come oh, in this week. Yes, yes, yes. That would be helpful. You want to give the perfect gift to an expecting mother? Stop buying, you know whatever gift i mean the 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 wipe warmer that she's never going to use get together and get her a cleaner get together and have a cook prepare meals and deliver it to her house so that when she's had her baby she doesn't have to worry about cleaning she doesn't have to worry about cooking she can just sit and nurse her baby which will avoid a whole lot of other problems that we see frequently with breastfeeding. I mean, that's the type of gift that is worth giving. Give her childbirth education programs or classes. That's totally worth it. Hire her a sleep consultant. I mean, that woman is going to love you for the rest of her life. She's just going to be obsessed with you <laughs> afterwards. It's an awesome gift. I mean, the gift of sleep when you become a parent. I mean, absolutely. All right. Well, I have. Oh, did she do it herself? Did she actually do it herself? I've been trying to get her. I, I told her, it's like, you know, you're going to be a big girl. You're going to kindergarten. You need to do this yourself. And she's been very resistant. <laughs> you have any tips on that, too? Like, how do we get four year olds? <laughs> don't want to listen to actually for the wiping i mean the only trick i can give you for the wiping is if you're wiping and it's still brown you ain't done <laughs> <laughs> that's what i tell my son <laughs> he's two and a half years old and he will tell me that he's still brown he's not done <laughs> oh wow okay well well that that advice i've already got so i guess i'm i'm just gonna have to wing it and figure it out with her you know what maybe a bidet i've been considering just trying a bidet with kids i wonder i don't know if it would be a mess or possibly amazing okay ju just think about have they done anything in flooding your bathroom yet they do like to use the toilet brush okay now think about having a bidet because I've actually thought about that too. It's like, you know, it would be really nice to have a bidet and have the nice warm water and I wouldn't have to worry about the toilet paper anymore. And then I really thought about it and my children with water and it squirts. I agree. We have little cups to play in the bathtub in the bathroom. And so the squirting water and no, you know what? Thank you, Carly. That's <laughs> not, mm -mm. nope, nope. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen yet. No. Yeah, I need to wait until they're a little older before I bring that in. But I, I do have to make dinner. So thank you. And you have a great night, Sam, because I know you're three hours ahead of me. And thank you for everyone who's joined us now and everyone on the replay later. Thank you so much. And be sure to check out Sam's seminar because it's going to be amazing. All right. See you in the new Bye. Great holiday. Yes. Love you.